Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar. I am Ahmed from Fioso and today we are going to talk about dome calibrations for real-time engines. We're going to go through the concept and workflow necessary to run applications on spherical screens using the Vioso software combined with the two most notorious 3D engines, and that is Unity and Unreal. Let's take a look at the plan of this session. So we're going to start with an introduction of the Vioso company and its technology. Next, we talk about calibrations, the difference between 2D and 3D approaches, and the steps necessary to integrate real-time engines. Uh, the real-time engines we're going to integrate today are first Unity and then Unreal Engine. Finally, we will share a set of references and resources that will help you get started on your own journey of developing real-time applications. For the first chapter of this session, we are joined by CEO and founder of Yozo, Emmanuel Tsug. Hello, my name is Emmanuel, founder and director of Yozo, and I'm happy to welcome you also to this talk about full dome calibration and how to integrate in real-time applications. For the ones who don't know Yozo, we are a company based 2007 in Germany with offices in Düsseldorf, in Paris, in Florida, and hopefully more to come. In this time span, we accomplished a lot of projects, over 250 worldwide, and a lot of them are full dome projects. So the core technology where we are just founded on, which is in every product available, is the automatic camera-based calibration of projectors. That is the adjustment of overlaps, the correction of the geometry, the mapping of the content to the projection, and the matching of the projector's brightness and color. And this in all kinds of configurations, whether single, the single computers, multiple computers, single user, multi-users, the typical setup that happened when dealing with complex projections. Kind of that is a typical full dome. Uh, it's a half a sphere like planetarium domes, but also simulation domes work like this. In this case, you see a 12 channel setup without any adaption and without any correction. And after it is corrected and adapted, it is a homogeneous content. In this case, a grid displayed everywhere on the projectors and you don't see any overlap, double lines and everything like that. How is that executed? In hardware, it's done on software. It's, it's done on software, but it runs on hardware, of course. So this is not nothing that is built in solely into projectors, but it runs on computers, uh, preferably Windows computers. And we offer quite some devices that you can buy off the shelf, but it's not the topic today. But the software that runs, which is genuine Vioso, is all capable of doing calibrations like this. So our software ranges from players to pure calibration softwares, integrated and third-party applications, um, dedicated OEM modules, but it's always based on camera-based calibration. So today it is all about dome calibration and we have two principles, either to play pre-rendered content, videos of any kind, or to play real-time content, which is generated on the fly. So I'm happy to hand over to my colleague Ahmed, and he will guide you today to how to apply camera-based calibrations to full-on projects based on Unity and Unreal. Thank you, Emmanuel. So you actually pointed to the most important question of this topic, which is what is the difference between dome calibration for pre-rendered content versus real-time rendering? Uh, first, let's take a look at the targets. For pre-rendered content, we usually want to play images, movies, and visual effects. While for real-time, we are looking at interactive applications, uh, virtual reality, and simulations. For warping, for pre-rendered content, uh, it's 2D wallpaper style uh, warping. For real-time, we are talking about 3D perspective warping, and we need to do frustum calculations. For this, the calibration will be different. So, for the pre-rendered content, we need camera-based calibration. For real-time, we need the same cam camera-based calibration, so the camera uh, scan plus 3D model alignment, or what we call in our workflow MRD. This will extract 3D data and 3D pixel coordinates uh, for our projections, uh, and with that, we will be able to do all the calculations necessary for the real-time rendering. So, let's take a look. I uh, on how this uh, calibration goes. So the Vioso calibration starts with the classical camera scan. It scans the surfaces uh, and so on. 
Next, for the 3D approach, we need the 3D model alignment, which aligns a 3D model to the camera scan that we just created. Uh, the output of this will be a, ge a geometry data, so the 3D scan of the screen, and we get a 3D pixel map. And the second result is blending data, which would be overlap, uh, edge blending, and color matching between projectors. Uh, this will be in the form of RGB bitmaps. These both data will be combined into what we would call an integration module. This will, will, will take it to the 3D engine and will result in a seamless multi-projection rendering. Let's look at Unity, for example. What does this integration module look like? Uh, looks like? So it's uh, actually two parts. The first part is the VWF export or the Vioso Warp format. Uh, this can be accomplished with Vioso AnyBlend, Vioso uh, AnyBlend VR and Sim, or Vioso Integrate. It outputs a file .vwf that has both geometry and blending data, and then it will go to the Unity Vioso plugin. Uh, the Unity Fuso plugin basically relies on the Fuso camera script, which overrides uh, the camera in your scene. So if you have a camera uh, in your uh, project, overriding it with the Fuso camera will get you started. Uh, and we'll, I will show that more in details uh, further. Uh, there is a configuration file, which is uh, the, uh, the, the brain behind uh, the coordination of all these parts. So there you specify the file, the file path for the calibration, the display ind indexes, if you have IPO in coordinates, also that's where it goes. Um, so once we feed all of this into the Vioso Unity plugin, we get as an input warped and blended outputs, uh, and we get a log file for seeing if we have any errors. Uh, so yeah, let's move at our first case demonstration on a single cluster Unity with Vioso calibration. So we're performing the calibration with our software, Vioso Core VR and Sim, but we can also do that with Vioso Integrate. So first thing we do is we hit the Calibrate button. We select the projectors we want to calibrate. We choose as a method dome or curved screen. We select the camera and click on next. Next again for the arrangement. And here the projector and camera are initializing. We see our fisheye camera that we're using for this calibration, uh, which is placed on top of our panadome. And here we can draw a mask to hide all the unnecessary lights that might interfere with the scanning. Once we're done, we click Next, and then we let the automatic calibration run for a few seconds. And here we go, we see the result of our calibration, but it is from the fisheye perspective. So what we need to do is convert this fisheye view into the correct perspective, and then get 3D data. These two goals can be accomplished with our MRD approach, and I'm going to show you how to do that. First, we click on calibration, then choose content spaces. Here we click on new, we give a name to our content space, like Dome. We choose type as 3D model and we click on create simple 3D model. Our software is actually capable of creating basic 3D shapes like domes, cylindric screens and panadomes. And all you need to do is enter in the dimensions of the screen and then it's created automatically. Here for our example, we're gonna click on panadome. We're going to put the right measurements for our screen 
and then we give it a name and simply click on create. Next we go to our player. Here we need to add uh, an MRD. For that we click on the small plus button, add model item and then add MRD. Here we can choose the name, Dome MRD for example, and click on create. Once we double click on this MRD, it will display the 3D model from the camera view. Here we go to calibration, show model view control. First we choose the model of our screen and next we fill out the information about the camera we calibrate. The goal for this step is to align this camera as close as possible to its position in real life. And as I'm filling out the measurements of the coordinates here you can start seeing our 3D model looking in the correct perspective. It's important to note that we are also here able to do some uh, fine tuning with our warping tool. Once we're satisfied with the result, we can go to calibration, conversion tasks, then we choose our compound conversion format as custom content space, uh, and then we click on perform. This will now convert our initial scan to a scan that contains the 3D data that we placed uh, with the MRD approach. And that's it, this is the result we see right now. And we can say that our calibration is ready to be exported to our 3D engines to run real-time applications. In the export formats, we have two choices here, either the VWF format, which goes to Unity, or the Visa MPCDI V2 which is uh, the end display integration format. Here don't forget to tick the 3D button. This will allow the 3D geometry to be exported. So let's first take a look on how a final result would look like in Unity. It would be basically um, a collection of three windows, three displays, each of them displaying the correct viewport uh, with the correct warping and blending. On our panadome. To learn how to accomplish this, let's jump into the Unity editor. First, we navigate to the Viozo plugin directory. This plugin can be found in the Unity Asset Store. Next, we grab the Unity camera script from the plugin and we add it as a component to each of our cameras. Here, every camera refers to a projector. As we see here, left is for the left projector, center, and right. Here, it's important not to forget to activate the multi-display feature of Unity. We can do that, for example, by adding this portion of script in our application manager. This simply goes through all the available displays and activates them. The last step is to configure the Viozo Warp and Blend.ini file. This is the file where you would specify, for example, your path for the export. Uh, you would specify your channels, which are your camera names in Unity, and their respective calibration indexes. Let's go to the play mode to see how that looks like. So we see the warping and blended applied for each of the displays. That means we are ready to build the application. The build, as you know, will produce an, ex an executable and simply double clicking that will open the application with the loaded Warp and Blend data. So summing up the workflow was the following. We did a 3D calibration, we exported it to VWF, then we imported the Unity plugin package, configured the scene and the cameras. Uh, next, we configured the Viozo Warp and Blend.ini file. And finally, we built and enjoyed the integrated calibration. 
Uh, a question can rise here, what if we want to accomplish the same uh, project, uh, a Unity project with multi-projectors, but in a multi-cluster system? Well, what if we want to improve performance and then uh, run the application on multiple PCs? Well, the answer is uh, Middle VR. Middle VR is an application to which we provide a direct integration. Uh, the workflow will remain the same, 3D calibration, export to VWF, uh, and then we integrated to Middle VR, which has a really powerful uh, synchronization tool, uh, a really good user interface also, where you can place your calibration files, specify your nodes, specify your viewports, uh, and then distribute all your rendering on, on the clusters. Our next integration example is the 3D engine Unreal. For Unreal Engine, the integration looks like this. Uh, we have two parts, the MPCDI export uh, with our software and the Unreal's end display. So the MPCDI export can be accomplished with Vioso AnyBlend, AnyBlend VR and SIM and Vioso Integrate. This outputs uh, an MPCDI file, which is a pack with geometry file with a geometry file called .pfm and PNGs, which uh, contain the blending data. Uh, this, this is fed to a configuration file for end display. Uh, this is the same as for uh, Unity. This is where you, you would specify the paths, uh, the clusters, the nodes, the inputs. And then all of this is fed into Unreal's end display plugin. This plugin is really powerful. It runs on single machines, multiple clusters. Uh, it can synchronize single GPUs, multiple GPUs, uh, supports tracking systems, so it's really great to use. Uh, and by integrating the MPCDI export from our software, we are able to uh, uh, directly get our application running uh, with the warp and blend. So let's take a look at our second case demonstration for multi-cluster on Unreal Engine. So for our Unreal Engine demo, we're going to run end display simultaneously on four clusters, one master and three clients that we can access uh, remotely as you see here. Every projector is connected to a client and the calibration is exported in the MPCDI format. A good first step is to check if we got a good result of the calibration. Here we can use the blueprint called PFM Preview in the Unreal Engine Editor. Uh, so we can simply drag it into the scene and then load our geometry files from the MPCDI export. Uh, we can load them here one by one and then take a look at the result and see the geometry of our screen. If everything looks good, then we can move to the execution. Now we are going to open the end display listener on each of the clusters through our remote access. Uh, make sure they are listening properly to the port of end display and that the network is running properly. After that, we go to our master node and we also run an instance of the listener and a launcher. The next step is to edit the end display configuration file. This is the most important file in the end display configuration. It specifies uh, the, act the architecture, the topology of the setup, and this is where we are going to integrate our views of files. The integration happens in the projection section where you can specify the type as MPCDI and then specify the paths uh, of the MPCDI export that we got from the Vioso software. This is composed of two parts, a PFM, a geometry file, and a PNG, which is the blending file. That's it. We've now integrated the calibration. So we go back to the launcher, make sure we're selecting the right configuration file that we just edited. We select an application and click on Run. Here we see the application is running uh, smoothly on all the clusters can try some movement and move around the scene. And as we see through our remote control that every IG is getting the correct viewport and having the blending and warping applied to it. So to sum up what we did there, the workflow is the following. We did a 3D calibration, we exported to MPCDI version 2, uh, 
We can preview this export in the Unreal Editor, see if it looks good. Once we are satisfied with the result, we configure the end display configuration file. And finally, we just build and launch our project. So that's it for our demonstrations. Now we move to the final part of the session, which is uh, the references. Here I would like to share with you some uh, useful resources that will hopefully get you started on your project. Uh, first is the Unity Sandbox, which is a Unity project uh, that you can use as a starting point for your uh, multi-display application. This project is available on GitHub and you can download it and get started from there. The second resource is our Vioso help desk. Uh, this is a very useful knowledge collection. It has a lot of articles, a lot of tutorials on how to do calibrations, on how to approach domes, and you can uh, see it in the website below. And the last resource I would like to share with you is our YouTube channel. There you can find more uh, videos, more tutorials on uh, calibrations and integrations to 3D engines. That's it for this video. Thank you for tuning in and see you again soon.